welcome. I'm excited to present with you all. This talk is Graph Data Science for Computer Vision. We don't have much time, so I'll try to go quickly. If you have questions, please save them or find me after the talk. I'm also a Neo4j and graph enthusiast, so I'm excited to be presenting here. As a fun fact, we actually leveraged Neo4j for our e-commerce product search model that helped us win multiple awards, including the grand prize at TechCrunch Disrupt in San Francisco in 2016. Today, we'll be talking about graphs and computer vision. We assume that folks are somewhat familiar with machine learning concepts as well as graphs and computer vision. It may also help if you have some familiarity with convolutional neural networks, but we will be covering that at a high level as well. For our purposes though, graphs are a flexible data structure comprised of vertices and edges or nodes and relationships, if you will, that can be modeled to solve complex problems. Computer vision certainly contains those as a growing and evolving field of developing camera-based intelligence with dozens of applications in virtually every industry. Popular examples include autonomous vehicles, facial recognition, and various extensions of classifications and, and search. Perception engineering research is based heavily on developing image and video analysis techniques. In the image to the right, you can see an MNIST digit being identified on a sphere, in this case, a six on a pool ball. Graphs have been shown to do well with 3D objects, hence including it as an example here. So for this talk, I'm going to be focusing on graphs and try to explore these three questions. Why are graphs useful? Why is it difficult to define convolutions on graphs? And what makes a neural network a graph network? These three questions serve as a good framework to better understand this domain, as well as the common questions people have about this combination. First and foremost, why graphs? Thankfully, the answer here isn't too different from most graph use cases. As mentioned before, it's a flexible data structure that can be used to define custom models per the specification of the user. In practice, it's also been shown to do better at highly complex and detail-oriented domains, for example, in medical imaging. Furthermore, it's worth mentioning that many ML models and neural networks are viewed as graphs themselves, which makes transitioning between the paradigms natural. To the right, we can see an image, an example of a graph being used to represent a face model. In this case, one that may be better suited for anchoring and facial expression classification, as opposed to more traditional, a more traditional Viola Jones or Hart Cascade model. So now we move on to this question. Why is it difficult to define convolutions on graphs? If you're caught off guard, don't worry. This is obviously a bit of a loaded question that jumps ahead a few steps. First, we need to talk about convolutions and graphs themselves. This will be a brief overview of convolutional neural networks, as it is a fairly complicated subset of deep learning. The reason it comes up here is it is often associated with computer vision tasks, in particular classification ones. When it comes to graphs and computer vision, oftentimes graph networks may be synonymous with convolutional networks, as they may still be convolutional in nature. Computer vision typically functions by analyzing an image, extracting features, and classifying outputs. CNNs work by applying layers of convolutional filters with a sliding grid-like structure. This tends to be particularly well-suited for computer vision because images can often be thought of as 2D grids themselves. CNNs are also well-suited for data augmentation convolution techniques such as shift invariance, which is translating your data in ways that still retain its qualities for example, zooming and rotating an image, spatial locality, which is the relation of pixels to the pixels near them, and compositionality, which is the hierarchical or categorical labeling of an image based on its components. I won't be talking about kernels or pooling or activation functions, as those are detailed architectural considerations that are downstream of our focus today. What is worth noting, however, is that these convolutional layers have dependencies between them based on the layers they are connected to often called the receptive field. In theory, CNNs are still good at handling both long range and short range dependencies in this way, but in practice, it's been shown to not scale linearly or perform as well. This is actually something that graphs can help with. Convolutions can be thought of as units, and we wanna define graph convolution units in our neural network. As I mentioned before, CNNs often operate with a grid-like approach. So what we want is instead to take a graph-like approach. 
We do that by projecting our data onto a graph by defining our vertices and feature vectors from the data. Like most graph algorithms, the focus of our convolutional logic will be around aggregation of neighboring values. I'll be talking more about that in a moment, but first I wanna clarify a couple things. First, that you don't have to have a graph model for a graph convolution or vice versa, but for our purposes, let's assume we want both. Second, that encoding your image, especially as a graph, is a complex process that there are many ways to do. I've listed a couple challenges here, such as center pixel or node, a challenge for both grid or graph approaches when you have one pixel or node that's related to all or many others. Spatial locality. Graphs can be arbitrary in size and have a complex topology, so determining locality can be tricky. And unfixed node ordering. The order in which you label your vertices can be non-deterministic. It can be a challenge, but in the case of CNNs, it can also be considered an interesting data augmentation technique depending on the task. Like all ML projects, the bulk of the complexity comes down to two areas, that being data preparation and ML architecture. We've talked a bit about data architecture once your data is prepared, but how about actually treating our image as a graph? This is one relatively fundamental approach that is helpful to understand. Let's imagine that we have data that is already a graph, say a social network with five nodes. We can structure this as an adjacency matrix as seen on the right, so as to treat it like a 2D grid, if perhaps we want to apply a traditional CNN on it. Similarly, we can imagine our image as a graph of nodes corresponding to each pixel as shown below. From here, we can try aggregating pixel values from neighboring nodes to take a locality-based approach to developing a convolution. If we wanted to try something simpler, we could try developing a heuristic based on Euclidean distance. This is one fairly general approach. However, the best techniques tend to be more domain specific, but this can be considered one way to start building a potential image graph classification model. We've created an example MNIST digit classifier using Python and PyTorch, which goes through some of these steps, including a comparison between CNNs and GNNs using a Gabor filter and a doubly circulant matrix. I won't be going through this in detail here and instead share it later so as to review at your own convenience. And I'll have my contact information at the end if you'd like to reach out. Instead, I wanna close this out by jumping ahead a few steps and circling back to what we might do next in another example. Let's say we've already gone through and iterated a few times on the previous steps. We prepared our data, perhaps put it through an encoder that's doing edge detection and helping process regions of an image to help. From there, we can project this onto a graph and apply graph-based convolutions as part of our neural network. We could do this by defining our vertices as connected regions and extracting feature vectors based on their calculated probabilities. We can then store and compare these in more varied or functionally complex ways, which is also more efficient and a technique that's often used. This may not make sense as it's a tremendous oversimplification. A similar approach is published in the Beyond Grids paper from 2019, a variation of which we've had success with ourselves as part of an ongoing project. I've included a link here if you're interested in taking a more detailed look at the algorithms used. And with that, I will wrap up. Thank you again for everyone for attending. This is a complex and evolving field, and hopefully you have a better understanding of graphs in computer vision. Thank you again, and thank you everyone from, Neo, from the Neo4j team and community. I've shared my contact information here. Please feel free to reach out if, you'd like, if, you, if you're interested in learning more, and please mention this conference as well. Looking forward thank to you. connecting with you. Thank you, and hope you have a great rest of your conference.